Hello everyone, this is Marshall Dillon, comic book letterer. Today I will be showing you how to make proofs and print files for comic books using InDesign. Uh, as you can see here, I've got InDesign open and I've got my Illustrator files, which are my lettering files, open over here. Today I'll be working on Wayward 16, which uh, is already done, but I thought it'd be a good one to show you guys. Uh, so first thing we need to do in InDesign is go File, uh, sorry, click on InDesign, File, New, New Document. Okay, I've got um, some presets here. Um, this is the comic book preset. So a normal comic book page is 6.875 by 10.438, but that's the, the full art size, the bleed size. The trim size, which is what you want to use when you set up your InDesign file, is 6.625 by 10.1875. Um, so go ahead and punch those numbers in there and then just click OK. So what you see here is a white page and it's got this little pink line. This pink line is pretty much something you're going to ignore. Um, it's a basically a safe zone. So this white box, that's our document size, is 6.625 by 10.1875. And so over here we've got uh, a pages palette and a links palette and then this is more information about links. We actually don't need that but I'll just leave it open for now. So first thing we're going to do I'm sorry I made a mistake here. You see here this line uh, and out here I'll just show you this. See how we have spreads set up so that every time you add pages it adds them in spreads. I actually don't want that. Um, most printers don't require it so I usually turn it off. So we can go to file document setup. And we'll just turn off facing pages. See that makes them all just single pages. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these but the first one. Um, so here we go. We'll go file place. That's going to ask me to navigate to those. Uh, this was animosity 3 which I just wrapped up. I don't want that. But what I do want Let's go to my work folder, lettering folder, Jim Zub folder, wayward folder, issue 16, and then my AIs, my Illustrator files. So I'll just place the first one there, just double clicking all these. I'll just click anywhere here and it pastes it off in the middle of nowhere. Now using a shortcut, uh, Command X, Command 0, and Command V, we'll paste it right in the middle. Um, command X is the standard cut command, so Command X cuts it. Command 0 just centers on your page, and then Command V is paste. So real simple. I'll zoom out there. See it's lined up perfectly. Everything beyond this black line is, is going to be trimmed off. Um, this is the difference between the files. Remember the, the lettering file, uh, standard art file, is 6.875 by 10.438. Then the trim is 6.625 by 10.1875 or 188, depending on uh, you know who, who you're working with. Um, but I mean, you're talking a, a difference of a few hundredths of an inch. It's not a big deal either way. So here we have again page one of Wayward 16, just one page here. I don't worry about masters for the most part um, unless I'm doing some design work. But this is just a, a proof and print setup. So I'll just drag page one down to the new page icon and it duplicates page one as page two. It's the same artwork. And then I'm going to grab both pages. I'm going to drag those and duplicate them. And then all four. And I'm just holding shift and clicking up to one because page eight is highlighted. If I hold shift I can highlight seven or I can just hold shift and highlight one and it drags it copies all of them. So we'll keep doing this until we get to twenty two. Now I don't need all of those again, so I'll just grab 21, drag one more, 22. All right, so so now what we have, um, you see this is this is the way this started off. Uh, we were at 16, page one, 22 copies, because it's 22 pages. Just blow this out, and just click on page two, click on the actual artwork, and command D is the place command. And then I can just double click page two. And it just switches page one for page two. So here we go. 
um, actual page one in InDesign and page one of the lettering, page two in InDesign, page two of the lettering, page three in InDesign, page one of the lettering right now. So I can, again, I can go through and I can do control D and place page three like that. Um, you notice here, uh, I'll show you real quick. Page four and five is a spread. We'll come back to the spread in a minute. Um, but right now I want to I want to get through the rest of these for you. So a different way you can do it is just by clicking on what's on page six, shift and click on 22. And that selects everything from six to 22. And then we'll hit this little relink button and it will go through in order. And it'll say, what do you want to put on page six? What do you want to put on page seven? What do you want to put on page eight? And that's a very fast way to relink these. So I'll click that relink button. Uh, again, it dumps me in animosity. <clears throat> We're going here, my Zub folder, wayward 16 AIs. Okay, so six, and then on page seven, we'll put seven, eight, etc. on and on. It's okay if you make a mistake because you can go back later and fix it. And if you accidentally put page 15 on twice or something, just pay attention to what you're doing. And if you do make a mistake, you can come back. Oh, I just forgot where I was. Let's say it's 18. Twenty-two. Oh, it looks like I did it all right. So a quick check. 22, 22, 21, 21, 20. 19, 18, 17. Looks like we're good. Okay, so back up here to this spread we wanted to do is page four and five. First thing we need to do is delete the artwork that's there because if you place if you place the spread artwork, you'll see what happens here. It gets funky because it's trying to force the width of the spread into the width of the single, and that just doesn't work. So we'll undo that, and that gives you that link back again. Just delete that. So we're going to delete the artwork. Sorry, let's shift and drag. Delete the artwork on page four, and delete the artwork on page five. And then here in the links palette, we want to grab both of those pages. So shift click, and then right click on those, and just uncheck both of these things that are automatically checked. Now just click off, and you see they get they have these little brackets around them. That's to indicate that they're different from the norm. So we're going to click on page five, and we're just going to drag it up next to page four until it gives you that little uh, that little graphic there, a little arrow. Pop it in there, and then it gives us the spread, which is really cool. Now uh, we'll do similar things. We'll Command D for place. Just double click four and five. Just click anywhere, and then Command X. Instead of Command-0, because that centers us on this single page, we want to do Command-Alt-0, and that centers on the spread, and then Command-V for paste. And you can see again, it lines up perfectly. We've got the black trim line, everything beyond that gets cut off. The black line in the middle is the spread. There's no extra gutter here that's automatically taken care of by InDesign. So we're good to go there. So now we've built an InDesign file uh, that we can use for both proofing and for printing. I'll save this to my desktop just for work purposes. Wayward 16. There, that's all we need. Uh, desktop. All right. Now uh, let's go to hit the home button to go to page one. I like to just zoom in so I don't have a thousand things distracting me. So now to do a proof, we're going to go File, Export. Um, again, Desktop, good. Uh, we'll just wayward 16. Let's call this Proof. And I use capital letters here, so it's very clear what's a proof and what's a print file. So I've, again, I've got a preset set up here, but let's take a look at what this is. In the proofs, I have spreads turned on. Um, I turn that off when I'm doing print files because most printers don't want spreads. Um, but basically what this does is the spread for four and five will stay looking like a spread in the PDF. 
Um, that's because sometimes when people are proofing, you know, or sometimes things will cross a spread if there are multiple panels or, or that sort of thing within the spread. And you want them to be able to read the spread as the, as the reader would actually be reading the spread. Uh, so that they can make sure that all the storytelling works and the flow works and all that. We want all pages. Um, if you were making uh, specific changes to specific pages, you could do a page range and you could put in like pages one through five here or whatever. Um, but we want all pages and spreads. Most of the rest of this stuff doesn't matter. Compression, I do mine at 100 dpi. Um, you know, 72 is screen resolution, but sometimes it's a little hard to tell uh, some of the details. So I like to keep that at 100. Same here. And I keep this at 1200. Um, sometimes this matters and sometimes it doesn't, so I just leave it. If they need a proof at a lower resolution, I can, I can bump this down for them. Uh, now this is the big thing here, marks and bleeds. Um, we don't want all printer marks turned on, we just want crop marks and bleed marks. And I'll show you these uh, when we're when we're done. Um, uh, most of this stays the same. I don't think I don't think this actually matters because because we have this set up. But for the for the purposes of building your InDesign file, go ahead and put in zero one two five for all of these, and that's um, that's an eighth of an inch. And then uh, none of the rest of the stuff matters. And we click export. So that takes just a minute. We can see it's already popping up over here on the desktop. So we see it just finished. We'll just double click that. And here we are with our PDF proof. We'll zoom out. All right, so we have a couple things here. Uh, first, we have our crop marks, which are the ones that point to the red line, and our bleed marks, which point to the blue line. Um, so everything between those two lines gets cut off. So the red line in is what you will see when you pick this comic up. Um, for the most part, this doesn't matter with this book because we have plenty of white space, plenty of gutter around these panels, so it's not really a big deal. Um, but just so you know, that's what those are for. Crop marks and bleed marks. I'll show you the spread here. So the same, same thing happens here on the spread. Let's zoom in like this. So the red line is the, is the trim and the, the blue line is the bleed. So everything between there gets cut off. So this is what we call a full bleed page or a full bleed spread. So this artwork is meant to go all the way to the edge of the paper when you hold the comic in your hands. That's why this bit of artwork gets cut off. Um, here this little black line indicates the center. And uh, that's really all we have to say about that. So this what, what I normally do is I'll send a, a PDF like this to the client, in this case to Jim Zubkovich, and Jim will give me notes, and we'll make some adjustments, and then I'll send him a second proof, and when he approves that, uh, then we'll do a print file. So let me show you how we do the print file. We're back here in InDesign, and uh, let's say something changed. Let's say we changed something here on page one. Um, when you open InDesign again, you will get a warning, uh, it'll be like an exclamation point here for, for the pages that have changed. And sometimes it'll automatically update them, and sometimes it won't. If it doesn't, you just click on the page in question, and you can click this little circle icon here. That's the relink uh, icon, like an automatic relink. Um, if, that, if that's not working for some reason, you can always just click the traditional relink button. Um, and so once you've impl implemented all the changes, you just do a similar thing, command E for export, or you can go to file export. Instead of proof, we'll call this print um, again, I've got some uh, 
presets here. Comic print is mine. You notice in this one, it pages is turned pages is turned on, spreads is turned off. Compression 400, 400, 1200. I always work at 400. Um, most people say 300 is fine. Uh, when I started working in comics, we used 400, so that's what I continue to use. Marks and bleeds are the same. This information is the same. Um, nothing else really matters. So basically what you're getting is a, a, a 400 DPI version versus the 100 DPI version that you had before. So we'll just click export. So there you see the print file finished. So let's open the print file. And I'll open the proof file so you can just see them side by side. So the print file is here on top, the proof file is here on the bottom. You just notice the lower resolution. Zoom in a little bit. I'll show you particularly the girl carrying the flower there. So you see it's nice and crisp here, 400 DPI resolution, and this is just 100. And that's the main difference. If this was to go to print, it would look really bad. Um, but this nice 400 DPI version will print perfectly fine. So there we have uh, the process for creating proofs and print files. It's almost exactly the same except for uh, the DPI. So we'll close both of those. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, I appreciate your support and um, pretty soon I'll be launching some courses on lettering and production and stuff like that. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for those and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.